What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final episode of the Montana State Bobcat Dynasty on NCAA Football 06. Today is just going to be a recap of the 2017 season. Starting with the Big Sky Conference, we won it yet again with a 9-4 record, 7-1 inside of the conference. NAU and Montana had the next best records at 5-3 inside of the conference. Sacramento State, Idaho State. State four and four. Eastern Washington and Idaho didn't do so hot. Neither did Portland State or Weber State, who only had two wins inside of the conference. Rough outing for them. And then on a more national level, I guess, taking home the Heisman Trophy is Ohio State running back Tim Bennett, 1,700 yards, 24 rushing touchdowns for him. He finished ahead of Auburn's running back Thomas Porter. You have Miami's quarterback here, John Grant in third Cal's quarterback Joe Scott and then Gary King Iowa's quarterback in fifth looking at more awards across the nation Tim Bennett finished with the Maxwell award there the Bernard Rick goes to Wayne Chase out of Idaho this guy has been a baller his entire career I remember when he was a freshman at Idaho just terrorizing us and he had a great career he probably has the NFL ahead of him he is a 93 overall Best quarterback goes to Miami's John Grant. The Walker Award goes to, of course, Tim Bennett. Best wide receiver goes to Thornburg, but in seventh place is our very own Marcus Lumpkin. Best tight end goes to Texas Tech's guy here. Ron Rogers wins Best Offensive Lineman Award. The Remington Award does go to Albert Reed. Montana State has done a really good job at producing um, a bunch of linebackers. We are LBU, but we are also looking Kind of OLU. We've produced a lot of really good offensive linemen that have gone on to the NFL. Now to defensive linemen, the Lombardi goes to Tommy Bowman out of South Carolina. Ohio State's Richardson wins best linebacker. The Throp Award goes to Kevin Dukes and best kicker here goes to Gray. Best punter goes to Frank Wilson out of Maryland. Best return man, Chad Dukes. And then best coach goes to Buffaloes, who leads them to a 10 and 3 record. Now looking at our own numbers, Matt Henshaw started off the year as our quarterback, but after 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, he ended up getting pulled. He did have a little bit of playing time later on where he threw that 11th interception, but then five-star freshman quarterback Breck McPherson came in, definitely had some growing pains, 1,800 yards, 19 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, and of course, poor completion percentage for both quarterbacks. I don't know what it is, but I mean, if you've watched this series for very long, pretty much every quarterback we've had in the series has had around a 40% completion percentage and it's just something I can't seem to just get past for whatever reason. McPherson had better numbers than it felt like he was putting up. I got really frustrated with him, but he is only a freshman. Running the football is probably something we didn't do enough of. 805 yards for Ryan Carter on 130 carries. He was averaging over six yards per carry, and he had seven touchdowns. Nathan Cronin, he was always good for a big run, though. Nearly 10 yards per carry when he got the football because he broke off a bunch of long runs. Four touchdowns for him. Marcus Lumpkin had a trick play. He took it 74 yards to the crib, and the rest of the run game just not really there. McPherson and Henshaw, neither of them are mobile quarterbacks, although McPherson did run for five touchdowns this season, which is kind of surprising, actually. Marcus Lumpkin led us in everything, receiving 40 catches for 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns, 28 yards per reception. Will Black with 22 yards per reception, five touchdowns, 700 yards for him. He struggled with drops this season, though. Hayden Turner, the senior, with 450 yards, six touchdowns. Chris Hansen, the tight end, had 166 yards and four four scores jeff murphy with a buck 91 and two touchdowns william dunbar with his first career catch i think he had this year or no not quite he did only his third catch came in this season his second and third catch he did have a bad drop but also a long 40 yard touchdown that he had against the grizzlies like I said, our offensive linemen have been pretty good throughout the series. John Jenkins and John Jenkins, the freshman tackles, were uh, probably the worst offensive linemen, but they weren't even that bad this season. 
Darren Perry had 51 tackles to lead the team ahead of Barnes, who had 19 tackles for loss. TFLs feel like a very underrated stat. I mean, they're just as good as sacks, and we went off this season for that. We also got a good amount of sacks. Ryan Nugent had nine. Joseph Pollard quietly having a great season with eight. Chad Barnes had seven sacks. Thomas with four. Morris with three, as does Darren Perry and Nick Fogle. And then uh, Brad Wheeler had just a single sack in his junior season. Anthony Parquet, four interceptions for the safety. Brandon Williams, the other safety, had three. Two for Darren Perry, Cole Hurd, and Nick Fogle. Dusty Foster had himself one as well. A handful of players here with one interception each. We did a good job taking away the football. 12 passes deflected from both Darren Perry and Eddie Fine. Forced fumbles here. Three forced by the senior Ryan Nugent. Like I've said before, we are linebacker university. We recovered a good amount of those fumbles too. No blocks, no safeties, but we did have four defensive touchdowns. And kicking-wise, Gabriel Fields saved his best for last 11 for 12 for the senior kicker. Punching the football, I mean, Stevens was fine, it looks like here. He didn't really do anything that horrible. Kick return, no kick return touchdowns this season. Black and Lumpkin splitting a lot of those reps there. Punt return, Lumpkin didn't do a whole lot there either. Now looking at the numbers of the teams competing in the national championship, Texas A&M is not going to be led by Justin Jackson, who was their quarterback for majority of the season. Instead, it's going to be Ryan Turner. Henry had a great year, 13 100 yards. Michael Terrell had 1,100 yards and 15 touchdowns. Both of those numbers lead the team. Looking at their offensive line, pretty solid, although Paul Guy did give up 10 sacks on the season. Matt Spencer with 18 tackles for loss. They did a fantastic job getting into the backfield uh, the, or this throughout this season, and they've only lost one game this year, and it just so happened to be their first game of the season, and it was to your Montana State Bobcats. Unfortunately, the story wasn't the same when we took on the Iowa Hawkeyes the very next week. They beat us by four points. And now these teams competing in the national championship for the second time they did so back in season five where Texas A&M won the lowest scoring game that we've seen maybe in this entire series. It was 10 to seven and I think it was scoreless going into the fourth quarter. Iowa, obviously, they are a fantastic team as well. If you're going to be in the national championship game, you're going to be a pretty fantastic team, which Iowa hasn't always been in the championship game. They finally got a win under their belt two years ago, actually three years ago in season 10. Before that, they were 0-3 in the big game. Meanwhile, Texas A&M has gone down to their third straight two years ago. They beat Cal by three points. Then they lost a thriller to Ohio State last year, so they're trying to make it two in three three years now with their third consecutive appearance. I was going to start off with the football and now Gary King launching this one deep downfield and he's got his tight end there. Philip Sherman on the deep shot. Iowa starting things off right. Now off of the play, fake pass is going to be caught in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Peter Lester and the Hawkeyes off to a hot start here. Texas A&M on their first possession. They face an early third down. Turner's pass is going to be knocked away, testing that right sideline. Ford denies him, and they go three and out to open up this one. Now King going deep here, and he's got Lester again, this time for a big gain over the middle. Gary King, I think he's three for three passing so far. He's looking to throw again on another, on another third down to the end zone, tipped and nearly picked off, but the Hawkeyes are in field goal range. This attempt from 37 yards is up and good. That's going to give them the early 10 point lead as we go into the second quarter now. Texas A&M looking to get something going on offense on the deep shot. Instead it's going to be intercepted there by the safety. Nick Kent with a big play basically round the route for the receiver there. Iowa's got this football going back their way once again. Looking to make the most out of it and unable to. They're going to go three and out after forcing that ball to Benjamin Jones. Nice tackle for loss in the backfield there by Jackson. He makes the big play. Now off the play fake, Turner should have been picked off again on that play. He's lucky he gets to live another down. Third down and long. This pass is going to be dropped. Would have been shy of the sticks. And the Aggies are going to have to punt the football yet again. Here is Iowa back on offense. Nice stop and catch there as they move the chains. It's Sherman the tight end. 
on the second down and seven. Down goes King. Sacked on the play there by Phillips. Finally, Texas a and makes some kind of a play. Off of the play fake. Now all day to throw and the time expires. Back-to-back -back sacks now for the Aggies. And they're finally doing something, at least on defense. Can their offense do something themselves? I mean, Turner is two of eight passing for it. Negative one yards and an interception. Maybe it's time to put the guy who was the starter for a majority of the season in there because Turner just can't get this offense going. He's looking to throw and he's barely going to get that throw off. Avoiding the sack, but they're going to have to punt. Can this defense hold them to another three and out? Can they? I don't know. No, they cannot there. A fantastic pitch out to the running back for the first down. And now a quick throw is going to be caught by uh, Benjamin Jones. No, not Benjamin Jones, but it is going to be a nice play until taken down in the backfield is Derek Mathis. That's going to take us to halftime where Iowa leads 10-0. Turner over the middle, and there he finally has positive passing yards. It's going to be only eight so far. Turner over the middle again, and he's got his man. A nice chunk play there. They're only down by 10 points, so they could still very much be in this game. Off of the play fake now, and down goes Turner. The ball gets stripped out, and it looks like Iowa recovered it. Yes, they do. Aaron Jackson with the strip sack on the play, giving the football back to Iowa, but then Texas A&M's defense is stepping up. They get the sack on that play. Looking to convert on third down. Now pass is going to be caught. Benjamin Jones to the left side. And they're going to pick up the first down. That's just a crusher there for this Aggies defense. In desperate need of a stop right now as this clock just feels like it's continuing to wind down. Pass over the middle is going to be caught. Benjamin Jones, he broke the plane. Touchdown Hawkeyes. And the shutout extends now. They're up by three scores. The waning seconds here of the third quarter. They're going to go to the ground game and pick up a solid game there with Warren Henry. Into the fourth quarter of play now, and it's going to be another good run. I mean, if that's what gets them back into the game, that's what gets them back in the game. If that's what's working, they should just keep doing it, especially if he's going to be throwing interceptions. Adam Jackson has another huge play. He had the strip sack. Now he's got the interception. Iowa wouldn't do anything with the football, and now it's going to be picked off yet again. This time, Todd Dodds with the big play there off of the tip pass, and the Hawkeyes finish the shutout here over Texas A&M, an underwhelming national championship game here in 2017. 17-0, the Hawkeyes take their second championship in this series. That's going to be it for today's video and for this series. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've ever watched this series, supported it, all the support I've gotten throughout the last over two years now of this series, it definitely will not be the end of NCAA on the channel or of the Bobcats. They will be coming back at some point in time. But again, thank you guys so much for the support through all the years. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.